Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks, where you can pick up some interesting tidbits on today's program. Russell Johnson, a household face, if not a household name. Arden fans will know him as Roy Hinckley Jr., but most of us know him simply as The Professor, the voice of reason and calm among seven stranded castaways shipwrecked on an uncharted island, Gilligan's Island. Johnson once reflected, I am the professor, and that's the way it is. The show has brought a lot of joy to a lot of people, and that's not a bad legacy. He slipped so naturally into his iconic role, you think he was plucked right out of a college classroom. But he's a trained actor, and his career consisted of more than just making radios out of coconuts. Johnson joined the armed forces during World War II and rose to the rank of first lieutenant as a bombardier. His plane was shot down over the Philippines and crash-landed on the island of Mindanao. He broke both ankles and was awarded a Purple Heart. After the war, the GI Bill allowed Johnson to enroll in the Actors Lab in L.A. He was noticed by actor-director Paul Henreid, who cast our young thespian in his first credited role, for men only. Also that year, Johnson stepped into the dark side with George Raft for Loan Shark. During the sci-fi craze of the 1950s, Johnson was seen in such features as it came from outer space, this island Earth, Attack of the Crab Monsters, and the Space Children. He also appeared in a variety of popular TV shows, which brings us to today's featured presentation. Russell Johnson, Joe Turkle, Christopher Dark star in The Unholy Trio an episode of the anthology TV series, Crossroads, originally broadcast October 21st, 1955. When three men attempt to commit a felony, a man is shot and killed. All three are sentenced to death, but only one pulled the trigger. The jury has found you guilty of killing a policeman while you were committing a felony. The verdict is guilty of murder in the first degree. Have you anything to say before a sentence shall be pronounced upon you? Frank Peroni? Jack Fromer? Irving Green? Very well, the court has no alternative. You were hereby sentenced to death by electrocution on the date of September the 18th next. I acted as defense counsel for young Green. Now, as you know, Rabbi, appeal was denied. And yesterday, all three of the boys were sentenced to the chair. Although only one fired the shot, of course. I knew Green's family back in New York. Real name is Greenspan. The boy shortened it to Green when he went on the stage. He was an actor? Of sorts, mostly in burlesque. He's a good lad, no record, first offense. It's the old story. Fell in with bad companions and wound up in a shooting. The mother just got here from New York. Didn't know until she saw his picture in the paper. Naturally, she's numb with grief. I want you to meet her. She's here? Yes, uh, I took the liberty of bringing her. I'm presuming on old friendship, but it's important that you talk to her. Mama Greenspan. This is Dr. Rosenblatt, Mama. The rabbi I was telling you of. How are you, Mrs. Greenspan? Please, Rabbi, you're going to help my boy. Ben tells me you were once a lawyer. You can clear him. He's innocent. I know. But I'm afraid that's impossible, Mrs. Greenspan. The sentence has already been pronounced. But they are wrong. My Irving was never a bad boy. A little wild, maybe. But he couldn't shoot anyone. The mother knows. In here. She knows you can't save him from the law. But she doesn't want him to die. 
convicted of murder. All I want is that the world should know what I know. That the little boy to whom I gave life could never kill anyone. I understand. Hello, Irving. I'm Dr. Rosenblum. I've been assigned as your spiritual advisor. Know what that means? I want to help you as a friend. I want you to know that. Is there anything you want to tell me? I know you're no killer. Why do you persist in keeping silent? Are you protecting someone? Are you afraid to talk? Who am I afraid of? The DA, the judge? That thing in there? All I want is to get it over with. How'd you get in with this crowd of hoodlums anyway? Were they in the theater too? Those creeps. They've got no talent except for... For what? Oh, nothing. Never would have met them in the first place if the show hadn't closed. All right. Come on, sit down. Tell me about it. Where did the show close? It was right here in this town, a week before Christmas. I didn't even have enough dough to get back to New York, so I, I looked up my brother Louie. Come on in, kid. Myrtle will be tickled to death. You never even met her yet, huh? Myrtle? Where are you, honey? Well, where would I be except in that stinking hot kitchen fixing your supper? Who's that? Uh, my brother Irving. Uh, he's an actor. Uh, you heard me speak of him. Uh, this is Myrtle, your sister-in-law. I'm pleased to meet you. Why don't you tell me you were bringing company for supper? He ain't company. He's one of the family. Well, that's no recommendation. What's the suitcase for? Uh, he's going to stay with us a couple of days uh, till he finds a job. Where's he going to sleep? In the sink? I don't want to cause any trouble, Louie. No, you stay here. That no good brother of yours has been living off of us for six months. Break it up. Sounds like a foundry. It's as close to one you'll ever get. Getting up or just going to bed? You lay off him. Supper's just about ready. Got something special for you, Jack. This the cause of the hassle? My brother Irving, this is Jack Fromer, our star border. Hi, Jack. Irving is an actor. This is an actor? Look, look, Louis, let me go. No, no, no. You sit down. Sit down. What happened to the girls after the show closed? The strippers, they still in town? I don't know, I guess so. You guess so? What do you think I'm letting you stay here for? Come on, let's go find the dolls. I don't know where they are, honest. Wouldn't do you any good anyway. Most of the girls are married. Strippers, are you kidding? Listen. Come on in, Frankie, the door's open. Louis's brother, close the door. He's okay, strictly from Dixie. You all set? Monk can't make it. Can't make it? What's the matter with him? Hopped up? No, he's in a jam with his parole boss. We had the store all cased and the car stashed. Have to put it off, huh? Put off nothing. Thursday's their big night. They'll be loaded. Hey, you can drive a car. Sure, I guess so. Louie's trying to get you a job at the cab company. You must drive good, right? Uh, pretty good. Maybe we'll cut you in on something. Make a little quick dough for yourself. Maybe you won't have to be an actor no more. So that night it was a candy store. All I did was drive the car. And after that? The drug store, the liquor store, a couple of gas stations. Why did you persist? You knew it was wrong. I don't know. Maybe I was too scared to quit. Maybe I just liked it. Excitement and all. It was 
like playing a good part in a show. Every night, a new performance. Did you take any bows the night you shot the policeman? I didn't shoot him. Who did? Would they believe any of us? We all got just the same rap. So what's the difference? Who did it? It makes a big difference to your mother to know that her son is not a murderer. Thanks, up. Sorry, Rob, I have to feed him. You don't want to die for something you didn't do, Irving. That's a terrible waste of life. And it's against God's law. Remember that. See you tomorrow. Dr. Rosenblum. Father's death. Good to see you. The warden tells me that you're helping Green. That's right. Good for you. I'm taking care of Ferroni. Oh, I see. And now, what about the third man? Fromer, who's helping him? Uh, the Reverend Stover. Of course, like us, his lips are sealed. All we can do is advise. You know, Father Devlin, I cannot reconcile myself to the fact that three men are going to the chair with the stigma of murder when it only belongs to one. I'm going to use what legal training I have to dig back into this case. Think I should? There's an old Irish expression that sums it up. More power to you. Thank you. <laughs> One of them had a gun. Were you sure of that? All right. What about the kid from New York? He could have brought a gun with him. No, no, no. He didn't do it. I know the boy. Look, Rabbi Rosenblum. A police officer was shot down in cold blood by one of three vicious young hoodlums. And they won't say who pulled the trigger. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they all pulled it. And the sooner we get rid of them, the better I like it. But two of them were innocent of the actual murder. Does that or does that not make a difference? All right. I don't see why you keep wasting sympathy on vermin, but... Well, I guess it's just part of your job. Hardly vermin, Lieutenant. Let us say human beings. Transgressors, yes, but... God's children, just the same. Here's the police report on the killing. Taken on the night of the murder from the owner of the lunchroom. He was an eyewitness. See if he says anything in there that'll give you a lead on the gun. Started to sprinkle. 
How come you're open so late, Nick? Someone throwing a party? Any of you boys drive that car hit behind the bushes out there? I don't hear anything to use, if. Nothing but the jute box. Somebody stuck up a gas station about an hour ago. They got away in a car like that. You, you in the middle, where do you live? 292 Washburn Street. It's quite a long way from home. Get up. Me? Yes, you, stand up. Sure. All right, get over there, all of you. Put your hands up in the air. Over against the wall. Hey, come on, move over there. Now put your hands on the wall. Okay, Zeb. Where's the gun? Well, it's not on him. Take another look in the car. They may have stashed it. Okay, I'll be right back. Call headquarters, Main 2000. Send a couple of squad cars. All right, you guys, we'll step outside. Keep your hands in the air and no false moves. Now start. Get going, I said. Can I get my cap hanging right there? Go ahead, get your cap. Stan Fromer and Green were arrested at the Greenspan flat. That's right, a couple of hours later. Was Fromer wearing his cap when he was booked? Well, let's see. Gray slacks, leather jacket, sports shirt, brown shoes, socks, shorts. No cap. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. You've been most helpful. Oh, good evening, Rabbi. Good evening, Louie. This is Greenspan. Rabbi Rosenblum, I'm so happy to see you. How are you? Three days I haven't heard from you. You've got news? Good news. Good news, Mrs. Greenspan. I've been to the governor. He's on our side. He's ready to grant a stay of execution the minute some new and important evidence comes to light. Such as what? Such as the gun that so mysteriously disappeared, Mrs. Greenspan. I wonder if you'll be good enough to show me the cap Jack wore the night of his arrest. Jack never owned a cap. He wore one at the lunchroom. It's on the police record. Well, he didn't wear it home. Hey, yes, he did, Myrtle. Remember when he saw the police car downstairs? He started yelling, where's my cap? Who took my cap? Oh, you're crazy. No, no, it comes back to me now. It's very important that I see that cap. Would you mind looking, Mrs. Greenspan? This cap. This cap is evidence for the governor? Could be. Well, where's the gun? The what? The gun. That's where he hid the gun, inside the cap. See the little gadget sewed in here to hold it in place? Yes, that gun will have the fingerprints of the man who did the killing, Mrs. Greenspan. Okay, so what's that got to do with me? Louis says Jack was looking for his cap when the police arrived, but he couldn't find it. Someone had picked it up and hit it, gun and all. Was it you, Mrs. Greenspan? How dare you talk to me like that? You get out of my house. Mayo, please, this is a robbery. That means nothing to me. You get out of my house. Myrtle, you're in the 
up to your neck. Do you know you'd get 20 years? For what? Hiding that gun. Suppressing evidence in a murder case. First, they've got to prove it. You know where that gun is. You bet I do. Right at the bottom of the lake where I throw it. The police should know. They could drag the lake and find it. The fingerprints will still be there. Whose fingerprints? Your brother's or mine? The execution was set for tomorrow night. The failure to find the gun left only one thin chance. A full confession from the guilty man. I must prepare Irving for the worst. Just then, I heard him singing. He's cracked. That song seems to get under his skin. I wonder why. Today he seems especially upset. Stop singing that He's song! He's evidently approaching a crisis. You shut up! You shut up! He's getting panicky. They all do. And the song upset him. Maybe now. What is it, Rabbi? Something's on your mind. Yes, Father. Something is on my mind. What does he want here? I thought you might have something to tell me. Something important. Very important. What could I have to tell you? Something of a cat. Or a gun. If you have something to tell, now is the time to talk. In Jesus' name. What could he want in Jesus' name? A confession. I want a confession. Confession? Are you kidding? Guard! Guard! Get this guy out of here! I got some rights around here I didn't send for you! When you do, I'll come back. Get him to talk if you can, Reverend Stover. Just left your mother, Irving. She sends you her love and her blessing. She knows you are innocent. She remembers the words of the Talmud. That whosoever destroys a life, it is as though he destroys the world. And she knows her boy could never do that. <laughs> She's a good mother, Irving. And God is merciful. Sorry to interrupt. Seek comfort in your own way, Irving. God will hear your prayer. I'll be right back. Jack. The barber will be here in a minute. I'll eat when I'm ready. That's my privilege. Guard, open up quickly. You sent for me? That song. Why does that song get me? Because it is a prayer. It is a prayer for help. Because that boy is asking God for mercy, and you can answer him. No, 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 no. Leave me alone. How can you expect God's mercy yourself if you don't purge your soul, if you don't confess? He's right, Fromer. You must tell if there's something on your soul. 
What song? Why does he have to sing that song? Because Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani means, God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? They are the words that Jesus spoke on the cross. All right, all right. I confess, I did it. I use a rod. Now let Ermie go free. Let them both go free. Only make them stop singing. <laughs> guard! What? Guard! What is it? Call, call the doctor quickly. What is it? What is it, doctor? He's not... No, he's breathing. Passed out like he's been doped. That's it. Pheromol tablets. He must have stolen them from the dental lab. He was having some work done on his teeth. How long before he regains consciousness, doctor? Hours, maybe. Probably sleep right through his execution. I guess that was the idea. But he just made a confession. It means two lives. He, he must wake up. He must. Not a chance in the world. The final answer to the question, who killed Officer Michael Negley, was brought up from the bottom of a lake yesterday by a diver engaged and sponsored by this newspaper after evidence uncovered by Dr. Rosenblum, well-known rabbi and lecturer. Fingerprints on the gun belonged to Jack Fromer. I certainly got to hand it to you, Rabbi. You did a terrific job. I had a little help, you know. Rabbi? I don't know of any lawyer who could have done a better job. He's God's lawyer.